Well, to uh, the, the apparently vexed issue of population growth in Australia, one of the first things our Prime Minister Julia Gillard did upon becoming Prime Minister was to shift the debate on population from Kevin Rudd's big Australia metaphor to sustainable population growth. Australia's current population is around 22 million. It's growing at a rate of one person every one minute and 13 seconds, apparently. The former Prime Minister believed, apparently, that 36 million people by 2050 was sustainable. But Ms Gillard is not so sure. This could be um, music to the ears of Mark O'Connor, my next guest, who wrote the book Overloading Australia, in which he argues that Australia simply can't sustain the kind of population explosion we've seen in recent years. Overloading, is Austra- Overloading Australia is about to go into its fourth print run, and he tells me that Dick Smith has just sent it around to every politician in Australia. Mark O'Connor, is that right? Dick Smith posted it out to all of the MPs in Australia. He did indeed, to every state and federal MP with a letter of his own telling them that they needed to read it, and then to every mayor in Australia. Well, I'm glad you could join me tonight, so thank you very much. First of all, is it, is it correct that, that our population is growing at a rate of about one person every one minute, 13 seconds or so? That's right. The Australian Bureau of Statistics is, is our, one of our national treasures because it gives us reliable information without spin. It actually has a population clock, which I think is the page you've been looking at, and it shows us you know, exactly how it's growing. It shows us that births in Australia are twice deaths, which gives the lie to Peter Costello's you know, nonsense that we needed a baby bonus. And it shows you, uh, you know, the, the, that uh, we have an extraordinarily high rate of population growth. It's about 2% a year. Now, that's about six to eight times the average for developed countries. Indonesia, just to give you an example of a third world country, has just got its population growth down from 1.3 to 1.2, and they're congratulating themselves on that. So our population rate of growth is higher than that of Indonesia? Ah, it's bizarrely high. It's a, a more than third world rate. If you look at other countries that have got population growth rates like ours, you're looking at well, the basket case uh, countries of, of Africa. It's, it goes against the, uh, I guess, the perceived image that I had of Australia that was a, a vast, empty country needing to be populated more. Well, I think, I think you're having me on there, but certainly that, <laughs> that, that was an idea that used to be around. Uh, but I think most people you know, understand that most of it is arid or, or, or semi-arid. What they don't also understand is that uh, there's very little fertile soil in it. You know, we're a stable, non-volcanic plate. And if you look at the areas that are actually like the Ukraine or France, you know, with a, a metre or more of fertile topsoil and sufficient and reliable rainfall, you're looking at quite minuscule areas. The geographer George Seddon put it rather beautifully. He said Australia is not so much a big country in human terms as a small country with big distances. That's a somehow very strong statement, isn't it? It's a very wise statement. Mm. Now, look, can I... I mean, one of the problems with Australia right, when I interview people is that we apparently build our houses and our cities on the most fertile land. In other words, the cities and the population centres are in the wrong part of the dirt of Australia. That's right, particularly around Brisbane, of course. You know, you're in one of those very few areas where there's you know, pretty good soil and, and pretty good rainfall, and it's all getting built over rapidly. The thing is that, you know, until recently, oil was very cheap, so energy was cheap, and the world basically grows its food with oil. That's what the Green Revolution was about. Uh, so, so long as, as food was cheap and energy was cheap, you could put a, put a city in the desert like Las Vegas. But I think in the future, every new city and suburb's got to be looked at very closely, asking that very harsh question, what are these people going to be so well-placed to produce that the rest of the world desperately wants, that the rest of the world will send them treasures like oil and food? And what is that? Well, not much. <laughs> if you look at the sprawling you know, uh, outer suburbs of Brisbane, uh, Sydney or Melbourne, they're not put there because they have any function. You know, Time was when you, if you looked around the world, you'd have said, well, there's a fishing port or there's a trade route crossroads. There's a reason for each city. But now they're just being put there because there's money to be made from real estate growth. Here in um, Australia, much of the fertile land is finding it's also, uh, what's the word, potential land for miners or new men- new energy producers, coal seam, uh, gas fields and things like that. Yes, yeah, particularly along the east coast, there, there's some strict, there's, there's some harsh conflict there between those two uses. Yes. Now, at her at, at Julia Gillard's recent speech at the Lowy Institute, she specifically declined to put any sort of figure on uh, or population cap figure. Yeah. How, how many is too many from your point of view? Well, it's not a good sign that she won't put a figure on it, but it's a common political trick. You know, they all talk about whether they, you know, they're, they're, they're big Australia.
Australia people or small Australia people, but they won't put a figure on it. Um, well, I'd go with the Australian Academy of Science, which did a very careful study, and it said 23 million was around our safe upper limit. Obviously, you can go beyond that limit, as we will within about a year. I've never heard that study. Just explain, the Australian Academy of Science has actually put a limit on it. Yeah, in 1994, they put out a book, they held a conference, and they publicised their results, you know, which got about one day's attention in the media. One of the great problems is that uh, ventriloquism in our media, that the, the people who profit by population growth, and there are, you know, for instance, real estate developers with up to $4 billion worth of property about to come on the market, just quoting from their own brochures, huge vested interests in population growth. These people find it quite profitable to set up various mouthpieces. They call them institutes, uh, urban task forces, you know, all sorts of bizarre names. So when it, whenever this question comes up for debate, up jump all sorts of people who claim to be researching it, but most, most of them are little more than hired mouths, and they tend to shout down the reputable authorities like the Academy of Science. So the Australian Academy of Science said back in 1994 yeah. that, that from their scientific evidence-based position that that 23 million would be a desirable cap on the population size of Australia. That's right, yeah. The way they put it was they said the quality of almost all aspects of the quality of life of our children and descendants will be improved if, if Australia's population is kept to that limit. Uh, if you've just tuned in, I'm speaking with Mark O'Connor. Mark has been a population campaigner for some time, wrote the book Overloading Australia, which is in its fourth reprint, which must be, I mean, a bestseller in Australia is about 5,000 copies, so you must be up about the 50,000 mark now, are you, Mark? Not that high, but, but to go to four editions is, is remarkable. It's the book that seems to have ignited the debate. I think before that book was around, a lot of people would see the effects of population growth and they'd be very concerned, say, that a mob of kangaroos had been enclosed by development or that the koalas were being killed on the roads or, you know, some single issue would really turn them onto it. And they'd go and see their MP and the MP would, you know, they're always sympathetic. They'd say, yes, I see your point of view, but what about this terrible shortage of labour we face? Or what about the ageing population tsunami? All these absolute, you know, put-offs that they have and ordinary people who aren't spending all their lives thinking about this issue, as I unfortunately am, you know, don't know how to answer those kind of cop-outs. And as I say, we've got these ventriloquists, these institutes, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, they have many, many names, committee for this, committee for that, and so on, that all sound as though they're public-spirited bodies. But they are actually funded by developers or property investors. And as a result, people are being terribly confused by all this propaganda, how you can't cap population. But you can. It's quite easy and it doesn't require any great constraints. How is it? Well, tell me how, then. Kelvin Thompson, you know, the MP who's, who's come out strongly on this, has, has put out his 14-point plan, which you can easily find on his website. Uh, but I won't go into all the details of that. But basically, um, while we've had a great surplus of births over deaths, that is going to pass off. We're moving towards even-sided generations, because Australian couples, I'd like to say, but since couples aren't stable, we'll say Australian women are averaging about two children each. That gives you even-sided generations for the first time. And so we're not going to get a great excess of births over deaths in the future. And if we can just keep our immigration, not even to a balanced immigration of the same number coming in as out, because I think we're always going to run a surplus of immigrants over immigrants, but if we can keep it to something like 70,000 a year, and if we can keep the birth rate below two, you know, not do stupid things like paying baby bonuses or talk as if it was a public service to have more children, then we can quite easily get the population capped at something like 26 million or with a bit more effort as low as even 23 million. So those, those things that are sort of described as middle class welfare should be repealed from, uh, from, uh, from statute books. Yeah, well, I mean, it's hard not to in some ways subsidise, you know, the, the, the process of having children. You know, I'm not opposed, for instance, to you know, m money to help uh, mothers or parents stay home because I think newly borns need their parents with them and a civilised society could offer that. And sometimes it's hard, you know, even not to encourage the people who are having too many children because, you know, if you cut off funds to them, you leave children in poverty. But what we must never do is have baby bonuses as such, talking as if it was actually a public service to have babies.